Hello, you're listening to Hugo Talks. This is an update to the island Ukraine refugee videos I've done in the past. Now, this is specifically for Ireland, but this situation is also occurring in many other European countries. But with Ireland specifically, considering it's a much smaller population and the number of refugees they are taking in, it's quite unusual compared to the other countries. So we have to remember that Ireland have a population of nearly 5 million and the government at the start said they were going to take in 100,000 refugees from the Ukraine, which was far more than any other country. Then they doubled that and said they are looking to take in 200,000 refugees, which would be 4% of the population of Ireland as it is that would be accepted. Well, yesterday, the government in Ireland has said there is no cap on refugees that Ireland will accept. No limit. So more than 200,000 is what they are saying. Here we see housing minister no cap on number of Ukraine Ireland will accept. Now I've said before in previous videos, this could very well be a way of taking people's property rights away from them by creating a situation where they can introduce policies where they say we have to take control of properties for the common good which they did change, they did change the law, property right law in Ireland back in 2020. Anyway, here is a clip about this on the news from yesterday. More than 20,000 Ukrainians have arrived in Ireland. The majority are staying in hotels and B&Bs. Okay, so as you can hear, more than 20,000 have already come into Ireland. But as they have stated as of yesterday, an unlimited amount are to be coming in which will be more than 200,000. But focus is now turning to the longer term accommodation situation. Today, the Minister for Housing convened a meeting of industry stakeholders. We need to look at other measures which I've been doing already about, you know, the how we will accommodate, you know, an unprecedented number of people who have come into our country over the medium and long term, whilst continuing to ensure that housing for all is protected. OK, this is a country, Ireland, with a housing crisis that has been ongoing for a long, long time. Over 10,000 homeless people on the streets in Ireland. Property prices artificially inflated and rents that are sky high with younger people finding it impossible to leave home. He said Housing for All, which was an initiative set up late last year to build houses. Makes me wonder who this was set up for, the people of Ireland, or did they foresee this huge influx of immigrants? Housing crisis for decades, but within months of setting this scheme up, we have this situation occur. In his letter inviting property and construction experts to the meeting, Darrell Bryan said that he wants a menu of options to help deal with the situation. The minister has launched a call for buildings and is asking the sector for assistance in identifying empty buildings, both public and private. His department also wants to find inactive planning permissions and potential sites for development. In the letter, the sector is also asked to prioritise labour and resources. So as you can see, they want to identify private and public empty buildings. So they are talking about, say for example, holiday homes that are sitting empty, people's property private property and this is where it starts to get into private property rights and once the government start to interfere with private property rights they are looking to take away your fundamental rights and take ownership of not only you but whatever people may own whatever it is it doesn't stop with property if there's a big push on the government to do this and the departments are there to help and to lift the impediments that's there for stopping a lot of these buildings coming back into the housing stock that is going to be fantastic for this and in the short term it will be good for the refugees, yes of course, but in the long term it's going to be very good for these town centres, for rural Ireland and for people who are living in them. Many of the measures discussed today are already contained in the government's Housing for All strategy, leading to questions from some as to why this additional capacity hasn't already been utilised. Yeah, that's the big question, isn't it? You have all of these government lackeys all of a sudden running around like blue ass flies, spending money, building properties. It's of the utmost importance. It's imperative we spend money and fix this problem now. And the question is, why did you not do it, do it before for the people of Ireland who have had a housing crisis for years and years? For the homeless, why not do it before? Will we get an answer? 
Of course that raises the question of why didn't you do it before? But I don't think now is the time to be churlish about that. What it is to get behind what's being said and to make sure that what's being promised here is genuinely delivered. Oh, OK. In other words, not going to answer that question. And if you do, this clown reckons you are being churlish for asking that question. In other words, he considers it a rude question. And it's not the time to ask that question because, well, the answer, what is the answer? Well, they have no answer. The answer is they could have done it before, but they couldn't be bothered to spend the money. Obviously not too bothered for the people of Ireland, but for the refugees of Ukraine, they will move heaven and earth, right? All of a sudden they are running around like blue ass flies, or maybe I should say yellow and blue ass flies, spending money. And why? Because obviously there is some form of underlying agenda going on here. Now, don't get me wrong, this is not the fault of refugees. They are going to go wherever they are sent, but this is obviously being exploited to push some agenda. And in Ireland, this is quite obvious. There are many numerous bigger countries with bigger populations, much closer to the Ukraine, far more suitable for this, and are not taking in anywhere near as many refugees as Ireland let alone making statements about 200,000 refugees and now they're going to take in an unlimited amount. Ireland at the moment are claiming they are taking in 500 refugees a day. You have stories like this in their fake stream media. Housing minister says government will pull every lever available to house Ukrainian refugees. The amount they are talking about is completely unsustainable. If it continues the way they are saying, you will have camps of thousands of refugees with nowhere to go in Ireland. Is it possible they will then say this is a crisis and then introduce emergency orders to house them, which will include taking away people's property rights? Is that the idea? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for listening. Come and subscribe to The Tribe at hugotalks.com, a place for like-minded souls, and I'll see you later.